Welcome to the Laser Therapy Institute weekly podcast, the world's first podcast about medical laser therapy for healthcare providers. Each week, we discuss the latest research, interviews with experts, and how laser therapy can enhance your practice. Now, here is the founder of LTI and your host, Dr. Jason Rountree. Hello and welcome back to Laser Therapy Institute's weekly podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Jason Roundtree. Today we're going to be talking about chronic migraine and we're going to be referencing a study. I'll give you the title here in a minute, but this study is actually very interesting because it is a head-to-head comparison of laser therapy and Botox injections for the care of patients with chronic migraines. So, This study came out in 2018 in the Archives of Neuropsychiatry. It is a Brazilian study uh, in a Brazilian publication, and there's even an abstract here in Spanish. I'm not going to read that to you in Spanish because that would be cruel and unusual. So I'm going to stick with the English version here. Uh, The title of the study is Botulinum Toxin A versus Low-Level Laser Therapy in Chronic Migraine Treatment, a Comparison. So before we get into exactly what that comparison looks like, let me talk to you a little bit about chronic migraine. Now, this is very specifically migraine headaches and that chronic category. So that is defined as at least 15 headache days per month. And that is a headache day is four plus hours per day uh, that counts as a headache day. So 15 total headache days per month or more, and at least eight of those days each month would have migraine symptoms, and that is the moderate to severe pain, light, sound, and smell sensitivities, usually nausea and dizziness, sometimes vomiting as well. Uh, This is a major, major cause for medication overuse, and this is not a super common condition. Uh, Chronic migraine is maybe maybe 2% to 3% of US population that ever gets to this level. But still, this is really, really severe pain, really disabling, leads to a lot of additional problems, especially because of the medications that are used. Um, And we can take what we learn from this study and in general can apply it to other lesser headache syndromes, the acute migraines, tension headaches, cervicogenic headaches, and know that uh, what we learn from here should have some level of application in those other conditions too, because this is really the worst of the worst. This is the disabling level of headaches that people, there's no way they can work. There's no way that they can really function on a really reliable day-to-day basis because the this level of headaches really is incapacitating. So the current treatment recommendations, I already said medications. A lot of times people with chronic migraines are assigned a preventative medication to try to reduce the onset and severity of these headaches. And then they also have an acute medication they can take once they have a headache pattern starting up. And that allows them to reduce the severity of the pain and also hopefully shorten that episode up. So you'll see that really, really frequently. Another pretty common recommendation for care is going to be the Botox injections into the uh, soft tissues of the neck and the head, in addition to sometimes trigger point injections with just simple lidocaine. Those have been shown to work pretty well. A little bit lower down on the effectiveness scale is massage, chiropractic, and physical therapy. Those have been shown to be effective um, in migraines, but not quite to the level of uh, medications and injection therapies. So this study though, went ahead and took a therapy that we know works pretty well, an intervention that we know works pretty well, Botox, and compared it to laser. So they took one group, brought them in, gave them the Botox injection at 31 different sites in the head and the neck. They took the second group and brought them in twice a week for five weeks and did laser on those same 31 points. So they just really said which one's going to work in the same area with a very similar uh, approach there as far as the areas that are treated, which one is going to work better. So Botox, of course, works by blocking acetylcholine release at the presynaptic nerve terminals, and so that reduces neurotransmitters um, going to the brain to, to indicate some level of 
um, neuromuscular signaling neuromuscular pain. It's a temporary effect. Eventually this does wear off. It is a neurotoxin that the body does process out. But laser works by a little bit different mechanism. I'm going to quote you from the study for that one. So um, the effects of laser therapy uh, are, are on the signaling molecules, ATP, cyclic AMP, and nitric oxide, modifying the redox state of the cells, free radical production and growth, and transcription factor stimulation. Nothing in there about reducing the neurotransmitter releases. So very different effects on the tissues. The Botox works by actually physically preventing the nerves from transmitting, whereas laser works by regulating the cells and improving their signaling. So getting the tissues more back towards the way they're supposed to function, rather than the dysfunctional way that they work with chronic migraine. Same areas were treated, very different expectations as far as what is going on in the tissues. So these uh, researchers had the patients track several things, both 30 days before treatment started, during treatment, and then 30 days after. So a total of 90 days of monitoring here. They had them track the number of days with headaches, headache pain days, the medication use and number of days, and the number of days with anxiety, and then the number of poor sleep nights. So we'll get there in a minute, but I want to talk to you a little bit about first exactly what this looked like and what the researchers were thinking. So they used a Brazilian produced laser. This one was in the 808 nanometer wavelength. They uh, have a power, used a power of 100 milliwatts, but they had a very high dose. The dose was 120 joules per centimeter squared with 33 seconds per point and that is a that was with a continuous uh, method of transmission so no frequency was used it was just continuously on if you know uh, anything about some of the recommendations for laser therapy dosing instead of the 5 to 10 joules per centimeter squared these guys are way 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 higher 120 joules per centimeter squared is is quite a bit higher than uh, most of these studies now, they, they, their thought behind doing this was to target four different clinical targets, really four laser. Number one was lymph nodes to reduce edema and inflammation. Number two was the injury or pain site to promote healing and reduce inflammation. Number three was nerves to induce analgesia. And number four was trigger points to reduce tenderness and relax contracted muscle fibers. So again, very different action from Botox where we just expect the Botox to be able to pretty much prevent nerve transmission. So let's talk studies here, uh, and results rather. So when it comes to the number of pain days, the patients that had Botox injections had a 79% reduction, even after at the end of uh, the 90 day period, whereas laser had an 80% reduction after 30 days, and then after another 30 days was all the way down to a 90% reduction in the number of pain days that these patients were experiencing. Medication use decreased by 70 to 80% in the Botox group and 83 to 87% in the laser group. The number of days with anxiety went down about 83% in the Botox group, but then came back up to about 66% total relief from days of anxiety. Whereas in the laser group, we had about a 25% reduction that then improved further to about a 50% reduction in anxiety. As far as poor sleep, researchers didn't really note any changes significantly with Botox, but with laser, it went all the way from 50% improvement in the first 30 days to 100% improvement at the end of that 60-day uh, follow-up after the treatment had been done. So comparatively, Botox versus laser, Botox definitely works. We've seen it work. There's, there's other studies we could talk about that, that show that Botox does work well. This study shows that Botox does give some really pretty good relief. One injection series it gave some really good results for a whole couple of months there, and that's when this study ended. But laser showed some slightly better results, really, in comparison here, 
And this was not uh, people getting laser continuously for 60 days or 90 days. This was 10 treatments spread out over five weeks. So twice a week for five weeks. So even after the treatment was concluded, we had continued relief of pain, continued benefits going on. So uh, I'll read you a quote from the study again here from the conclusions, because it really does some of everything pretty well. They say, although both treatments seem effective in reducing chronic migraine pain, Botox is efficient, but it is expensive, while laser therapy might be more cost effective. Thus, Botox is an invasive and expensive method, while laser is a longer treatment, five weeks, but is cheaper. So comparing head to head, you got both of these treatments are very effective. Botox is invasive because it's an injection process, minimally invasive, but still invasive, injecting a neurotoxin into these areas. I will go ahead and say too that we know Botox has a period of effectiveness after which it does wear off. And that's not really quoted in this study. We, we know it went through the 60 days, but we do know it has uh, sh relatively limited time for its effects. It's more expensive. Even just that single injection process is going to be more expensive than a series of treatments with laser. Laser is non-invasive. And in this case, at least, it's, we've been able to show that it is more effective than Botox. And while it's maybe not as convenient for the patient to just have to come in once, if we have non-invasive treatment that actually leads to healthier tissues, reduction of inflammation, that has much better overall effects for the patient than going in with a more invasive treatment that we know is going to have a limited time period of effect. So what are your takeaways? Well, number one, you can't look for instant overnight results with laser. It can happen pretty darn quick, but it cannot be just instantaneous in most cases. You need to give it time to work. You can get some excellent results if you just give it enough time to work. Now, if you're seeing patients in your practice and you're using laser and you're not really sure what the treatment plan sh should look like or what you should be able to tell patients about what to expect, uh, how often to treat, where to treat, what settings to use, what equipment to use, all those things we can answer for you. Give us a shout, send us an email, get in touch with us, we will help you through that process. But remind your patients that it can take time, all right? Don't, don't let them get discouraged at the two week mark because these folks went five weeks before they had these really significant results. Number two, technique is really critical if you're going to be successful. And these researchers knew the 31 different spots that they would inject with Botox and they said, hey, let's see what happens if we just do laser instead. And you know what, it worked out pretty well. So these researchers even said that you know following this protocol can, can really be a pretty feasible strategy. However, there are so many different factors to be chosen when designing different laser therapy protocols. And again, I'm quoting the study here when they say, look, application sites in the head and the neck, the timing, frequency, and repetition of treatments, the wavelength, the dose, the irradiance, the pulsing, the polarization, and whether or not you can end up with a biphasic dose response whereby you overstimulate rather than uh, get the right level of dosage in. All those huge number of factors do make this a little bit more difficult. So if you need good techniques, uh, you need to find techniques that have been uh, well established, that definitely do work. Again, that is exactly what we do here at LTI is we get those well established, effective treatment protocols into the hands of our member clinics and we help them put those into action so they can see good results. I hope this was in, uh, informative. I hope uh, you can use this information in practice when you're comparing uh, treatments and talking to your patients about the treatments that uh, you offer and the effectiveness of them. If you have questions, get a hold of us. Until next time, have a good week. Subscribe now to keep learning about the growing field of laser therapy. Check out our patient-focused podcast, Healing at the Speed of Light, a great resource for your patients. For massive practice growth and improved patient outcomes, Become a certified Laser Therapy Institute clinic. Learn how at lasertherapyinstitute.org.